Welcome back. I'm Channel 3 Chief Political Reporter Susan Rapp. Over the past 20 minutes, we've been sharing our interviews with Republican U.S. Senate candidates Themis Claritus and Peter Lamage. Leora Levy was supposed to be here for the taping, but at the last minute, she canceled, citing a scheduling conflict. The interviews were recorded Thursday afternoon before we learned later that evening that Donald Trump had endorsed Levy for Senate. So we wanted to make sure that we address that development in this program. Eric Parker isn't able to be here, but Hearst Connecticut Media's Dan Har is. So thank you for joining us. And what do you make of the Trump endorsement? Um, well, it's not a surprise. Uh, she was, of course, uh, Trump's appointee for ambassador to Chile, which did not happen because the Senate didn't give her a confirmation vote. So it's not a surprise, but it's a surprise that it's coming this late. And we had thought by now that if it didn't come, it wasn't coming. And that, that part of it is the surprise. No, it wasn't a surprise. In fact, both candidates told me that they were expecting it. But the way that it went down at a Republican uh, fundraiser, if you will, uh, and that she played uh, Donald Trump on the phone in front of Themis Claritus and Peter Lamage. And it helps her. It, 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 well, that's typical of her personality, um, which is, God forbid, she should do something in a low-key way. But she does get a boost in the primary, in Tuesday's primary. There's no question about it. 38% of the state voted for Trump. So you say, oh, well, Trump is unpopular in Connecticut. This can't help her. Those 38% represent the majority of Republicans, and that's who's voting on Tuesday. She gets a boost, maybe some oxygen into a campaign that needs it. But is it too little too late? I mean, had this uh, endorsement maybe come out a week or two ago, she could have done a lot more with it and gotten her message out. Well, you can get the, you, you can get the word out, yes. But I think she was probably already... First of all, we don't know that there was ever a gap. We say that Themis Claritus is the front runner because we have some polling that showed that she was slightly ahead or ahead, and because she had uh, the endorsements of a lot of local officials. But in a primary where you have uh, maybe 90 to 100,000 people are going to show up, maybe now more because of Trump, but then those are going to be Levy voters, maybe 100,000 show up, you could have 35, 40,000 wins this race. So it's a wild card. All right, before we continue, I want to read the uh, statements that came out of Themis Claritus and also Peter Lamage's campaign in regards to the Trump endorsement. Themis Claritus says, I'm proud to be endorsed by those who know how to win in Connecticut. My focus remains on retiring Dick Blumenthal and making our country safer and more affordable. This does not change my message, my priorities, or my greatest strength, that the voters of Connecticut know that I'm the only one capable of winning that fight. We also reached out to Peter Lamage. This is what his campaign told us today. Regarding the primary, nothing has changed. The voters have a choice to make between me, a true unwavering conservative, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-Constitution, or a Themis, who is an establishment candidate, pro-abortion, against the Second Amendment, a career politician who would be another Liz Cheney if elected. Dan, who is hurt more by the endorsement? Who is hurt more between, I would say Lumage is dead in the water uh, because anybody who sees, who's a Trump voter who sees that Trump endorsed Levy, you know, maybe they like him because he's a, a more, I say more of, he's a gentleman and he's a well regarded person in the community. And maybe they like that and they like his story, his backstory of escaping from Albania. But as far as the pure politics, it has to hurt him. Um, Themis just has to get that traditional Republican vote out. Uh, you know, this ups the stakes. There's no question. Right. How many conservative uh, Republicans do you think are going to turn out for a primary, which usually has low turnout? I mean, obviously, those voters going to the primary are engaged. They're voting in the primary. But is there enough of the Trump factor in Connecticut to push Leora over the top in the primary? I would, I would turn the question around and say, are there enough traditional non-Trump Republicans, or I shouldn't say non-Trump, I should say pre-Trump Republicans, because even Themis was a Trump delegate in 2016. Nobody is untouched by Trump in the Republican Party. There are, the no Trumpers, ever Trumpers are, are simply gone. I would turn it around and ask you, I mean, are there enough of the other Republicans to help Themis? I don't know. I don't and, lo and looking forward, who do you think, I mean, whether Leora uh, pulls it off uh, or, or Themis, um, who's hurt uh, most going forward to Blumenthal? I mean, I think some people would think that, you know, Blumenthal has a better shot. I don't think the Democrats are too concerned. They told me today they're not concerned if either of those candidates win because they think Blumenthal is strong, but his approval rating is definitely uh, declining. 
Yeah, but his war chest is not declining, and $8 million does a lot for four, four to six points of lost approval rating, which is really all he's suffered. And we're making a big deal of it, rightly, because at, at the peak of his career at this point, he shouldn't be losing approval rating, and he is. Maybe that's tied to inflation. Maybe it's tied to Biden. Maybe it's tied to negative campaigning. I don't know. But the bottom line is that, yes, he's secure because both of his experience and because it's a blue state and because of that $8 million. The Republicans, on the other hand, had a chance to have a good shot at him, and they now don't really have a good shot at him because of what's happened. We only have about 20 seconds left. What do you think about Bob Stefanowski, who was uh, very uh, supportive of Trump uh, four years ago, not so much this time? Do you think that this will have any impact or effect on his campaign? Yes, we reported, uh, Hearst reported Friday that uh, the Stefanowski campaign is not seeking the in endorsement from Trump. That tells you that he knows that in a general election, it's not what he wants, and that's what Levy is going to have to deal with if she wins. Thank you, Dan Hart. Thank you for joining us on CT22. Don't forget, Tuesday is the primary. You have to be registered in a party to vote, and you'll only be able to vote in races within the party where you're registered. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tune in to WFSB all day long and to WFSB Plus starting at 8 p.m. after the polls close for complete coverage of the primary. And that is CT22 for this week. CBS Sunday Morning is next. Have a great rest of your weekend. Eric is off next week, so I invite you to join me back here in the Studio A next Sunday morning. <laughs>